Hey everyone, my name is Sam, and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell for notification, and give the video a thumbs up. So as always, I want to go over the books that I read this week. And I read seven books this week, I believe, so I got lots to talk about. Okay, we're going to move backwards through the week, just because that is the order I put the books when I put them into a pile. So let's get started with Society of Wishes by Elise Kova and Lynn Larsh. This book is about our main character, Jo Josefina Espinosa, Espinosa, and she is a hacker for hire, and in like the very kind of not too far distant future after the United States has been cut up into kind of mini states after the Third, third World War or the next Civil War. I don't know. There was a civil war of some sort. And she hacks essentially just to stay, help her mom stay afloat. Um, and they don't have tons of money. And at the beginning, some big events happen and she joins a group called the Society of Wishes. She struggles to find her role throughout this in that society. And you learn a little bit more about her and the whole world and kind of the concept of like, if you took yourself out of the world with the people around you have been better off and like, what effect did you have on them? Would they change kind of concept? Overall, I ended up giving this book a 2.5, maybe 3 out of 5 stars. I really struggled with it. It's only 270 pages, but I didn't really enjoy it. The writing, I, I've read several of Elise Kova's books before, and I really enjoyed her writing normally. However, this one, it is a co-authored, and I don't know if it was like just like the other's them meshing their voices together, but it felt very clunky. It didn't flow super well. Several sentences I had to continuously reread to try and understand exactly what they were saying. Uh, there were a couple typos I noticed at the beginning. There's one character named Snow, and the first time I think he's mentioned actually in my book, he's called Smo. And I know that happens when you're doing kind of self-published kind of things, but, you know, it was just things on top of things that I kind of kept noticing. One of the worst parts of this was one of our main characters. They do kind of specify at the end that he's from a different time period, but he continuously calls our main character, Dollface. And I cringe every time. That is such like a demeaning thing when I think of it. And like, it just, it was just, it's super uncomfortable. I mean, it was more uncomfortable than the sex scene with the character that I was just like, I don't get why she's doing this with him. Cause I, <laughs> I don't like him. I didn't like any of the characters. None of them were really fleshed out in all honesty. The magic was not even remotely explained. They just kind of gave half explanations sometimes where I was just like, huh? And I mean, the actual like explanation for the entire society of wishes existing was not, re was not well explained. I did not fully understand it when they explained it. And I kind of slowly started trying to figure out it as it was getting near the end. And I think I figured it out, but I don't know. So I'm not going to be continuing with the series, unfortunately, but I am going to keep an eye out for the next Elise Kova books that she does. Then I read The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead, and this was honestly picked up because uh, this book was suggested to me anytime I went on Goodreads. Half of the books when I would go look at the page, it's like, if you like this, you should try this. So I finally broke. I read it. I've never read The Vampire Academy. That honestly really predates me reading. I mean, like, I've read Harry Potter and, like, Twilight and all that stuff, but when I was younger, I didn't read all that kind of big fad stuff. So I've never never read the book. I've seen the movie and thought it was meh. So I wasn't totally sure what I was getting myself into. I didn't have any issues with the writing. The book's just, it's just absolutely not my style. It's overly cheesy. There's stupid declarations of love in awkward positions where the reader's like, you guys are going to get caught and it's going to change the whole... And I feel like the author changed her mind like four times while writing this book as to what the actual plot was going to be because it started to develop into this. And she's like, ah, no, we're going to go this way. And like, no, 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 actually, maybe we'll go this way, but then kind of zigzag back here. It just was like not enjoyable for me to read. Uh, it was pretty, I, I mean, like the declarations of love were immensely cheesy. I, I rolled quite a few times and the characters just were not developed enough. I started just blobbing them all together whenever one of them was talked about any of the side characters. I know there were several of them. I read the book like three days ago. Can't remember a single person's name. Can't remember the land name. I don't honestly, I remember that there's like the glittering court. I don't remember any of the courtiers. I remember that were, there was one villain mom. It's just a very forgettable book that doesn't have anything super unique about it, nor is it, like, in my opinion, very well done. So I think I gave it a two out of five stars, and I won't, I won't continue on with the series. Then I read 
Blood Rose Rebellion by Rosalind Eves, and I almost bought this book a couple times, um, but I held off because I had quite a few people say that they actually DNF'd it or did not like it whatsoever, um, and then I had a couple friends said that they liked it, and I thought the cover was cool, and the plot sounded interesting. I love when they go to, like, European countries that just aren't England and Paris. I feel like we just always go to those countries, not even in just, like, fantasy and historical fiction, just in general. That's our default when we think of Europe, but there's other countries in Europe, so I love when they go to, like, Norway or Denmark or Iceland or Hungary or Turkey or all these different places. So I was really excited that this went to, you know, England and then Hungary. I wonder if it specifies which area. See, I'm having a hard time summarizing this book because I legitimately read this the day before I read Glitter in Court. I can't remember most of it. It's just, once again, very forgettable. Writing wasn't super bad. It wasn't amazing. Super cheesy, super predictable, very eye-rolly. I, it, it was fine in the first, like, third... And then I hit a mark where I just was like, oh my god, we've been doing the same thing for like three chapters now. I started full on skipping chapters, not skimming pages, skipping chapters, and was still like, oh, okay, they're still talking about this. Oh, okay, that's what they're doing. Like, it's just, uh, it wasn't well executed. I liked the concept. I like going to other countries. I like rebellions. I can, I, yeah, it's been done before of the unique sister who has powers that no one thinks she does and under, everyone underestimates her and then bam, she starts a rebellion. I know it's been done before. I thoroughly enjoy it though when it's done, but it was annoying and frustrating and the romance was so unnecessary. Just make them friends. You don't, you don't have to have a romance in every single YA book. It's one thing if it like supports the plot or like you've got us rooting for it and it's like a slow burn romance, but don't do it just because you're like, well, we need a romance. Uh, don't, just don't do it. So I give this book like a one and a half, two stars out of five, and I won't be continuing on with the series. I mean, that's three, like not continuing on with the series, which feels like I'm being harsh, but then I'm like, girl, you have so many series to read. It's a good thing. And there's new series starting every day, it seems like. So it's okay. Then I reread The Beauty of Darkness by Mary Pearson. This is an example of what, you know, take a girl, underestimated, has power, no one thought she did, takes her, starts rebellion. This is how you do it right, though. And there is romance in here. And it's bearable and pretty enjoyable, honestly. This is how you do it properly. <laughs> so rereading The Remnant Chronicles was one of my 2018 goals. And now I'm done it. Our main character, Leah, is just kind of continuing on. And they're kind of on the upswing now and starting a rebellion against this kind of dictatory, sketchy um, kingdom. Not even the kingdom. The leader of the kingdom. And there's lots of stuff going on. And we meet Leah's friend again, who was kind of, they were separated basically at the end of The Kiss of Deception, and, you know, the love triangle kind of gets sorted out and everything. I I really enjoy this book. I like the second book best in this whole series, so I always kind of have a little bit of a hard time, especially because of how big it is. I'm like, awesome, Kiss of Deception, Heart of Betrayal is the peak. Then it's like, oh, okay, Beauty of Darkness. I really like how the last battle scene in this is written. I really enjoy it. I always get hyped up. I kind of normally feel myself like panting and getting like my adrenaline going. And my only kind of meh is, like, there's a lot of, like, romantic, um, like, problems. The, the main couple has lots of, like, arguments. And I just feel like when, like, they're fixed and get back together, because it's like, this is, that's always what happens. It, it just wasn't done w well enough, or maybe there was too many conflicts that I was, like, in love with them. Then the conflicts happened, and I was down here, and then they kind of got back together. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm like, I'm okay with you guys, but it's not the same way as I love them before. I am also rereading The Lunar Chronicles, so I started reading Cinder at, well, I, I started, I finished, I started and finished reading Cinder by Marissa Meyer, and I'm going to try and get to Scarlet later on this month as well. I absolutely love this. If you somehow don't know what Cinder is, it is a Cinderella sci-fi retelling where Cinderella is a cyborg living in Asia after the Third World War. Maybe that's why I keep confusing Third World War and Civil War, because I always tend to read books that happens in. This is like the Third World War where the world is kind of recarved up again. And there in the past was a colony sent to the moon. And those people have like these magical powers. But, you know, it's not a great place to live up there. They've got a dictatory queen, Olavana, which we have a novella to read of later on about. And our main character is the cyborg orphaned daughter who was picked up by a scientist and taken in. But he later on dies. So she is stuck with her stepmom, who does not like her, and the stepmom's two biological daughters. And one of them she's really close with because there's a plague and has for several years been uh, a plague that's been wiping out 
the population. And Lavana, you know, on the moon, they think that she might have a cure, but she's withholding it. And I, I just, I love this book so, this whole series, honestly, it, it, each book just gets better and better. And like, she, I remember Marissa Meyer in an interview saying like, she, when writing Cinder, would not have been able to write Winter, which is the last book. So, I, and you can really see that progression of her writing skills and like how she slowly builds all these characters and inter, interweaves them all together because they do like, you have Cinder and Kay and uh, their s s friendly cyborg kind of like best friend in this one. And then the next one we meet Scarlet and Wolf, which is the Red Riding Hood. And then we meet Cress and Thorn, which is Rapunzel. And then there's Lavana, who's like the evil queen. And then in winter we meet Snow White and her boyfriend, which I honestly can't remember the name of right now. But yeah, I absolutely love this. I love the setting. I love all like the developments and like, I remember first time reading this when like the reveals happened. I was like, what? Like totally did not see that coming. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I was so swept in the world and kind of the same thing when I reread it. Just totally loved it. It's been, and it's, my memory is horrible and it's been so long since I've read these that I, I honestly don't remember three quarters of this. So didn't remember three quarters of this before reading it. So yeah, love it. If you haven't read it, I don't know what you're doing with your life. You need to read it. My second last book of the week was The Tangled Lands by... Paolo, I'm just going to say B because I don't know how to pronounce his last name and I apologize. And Tobias Buchel, Buchel. So I actually thought this book was going to be one thing, but it, it ended up being something totally different. I ended up giving it, I think, a three and a half or four out of five stars. I still really enjoyed it. It just wasn't exactly what I was expecting. So it is set in a world where the kingdoms within here are being overtaken by, I can't remember what the name, it's like a plant, but it's a poisonous plant that if you touch it, you die like it is, or puts you into a deep sleep that you just never wake up from and it is caused by people using magic so there is kind of a dictatory guy in this kingdom here who essentially threatens and puts down and kills people in his kingdom that he catches using magic and they've put all these like kind of spells and 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 they've used like different like tricks to try and find people so at one point at the very beginning essentially one of the characters creates a potion kind of thing and if your skin or whatever grow, glows blue, that means they know you've used magic and they'll find you. And I thought it was going to be like kind of like getting over and battling and finding out how to get rid of the evil king and the poison kind of stuff. However, it's not. It's the four. There's four different perspectives. Two of them are written by each author. And you see the different perspectives of people in different positions and um, you know races in this kind of kingdom and world and see how they are dealing with the poison plant and the suppression of magic and all that kind of stuff. Even though they were written by two different authors, it wasn't kind of like co-authored content from the sounds of it. I actually pretty enjoyed it. It didn't seem kind of up and down all the time. However, just kind of like with all novellas, it's kind of hard to get invested in the characters and like their plot when you know it's only like that much, which is fine sometimes. But I mean, the book itself is not big, but you're splitting that up into four four chapters and each or point of view and each point of view has different characters and different problems to develop. I really enjoyed though that each character tends to have some sort of interaction with someone who has been put into deep sleep by touching the poison plant by accident and you can kind of see how they struggle with like do we kill them? I can't kill my best friend or my wife or my sister or all that kind of stuff so I found it super super interesting but yeah so I would actually pretty suggest this one. It's a pretty quick read. It's enjoyable. It's not super complex and the cover is super super cool. This is all like 3D'd up and then there's the spine which is really cool and underneath the dust jacket the spine has like the tangled like plants weeds kind of thing so I really enjoyed the design of this book as well it was kind of a cherry on top kind of situation and the last book that I read this week which I honestly don't feel like I have the right to review is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban the illustrated edition I hadn't actually read the illustrated edition of this yet so uh and it is my favorite book and film in the movie the film is probably tied with this one in Order of the Phoenix, but I absolutely love Pri Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Sirius is like, I, that's the problem. I feel like Harry Potter just on its own gives me nostalgia feels, but then like all the characters where you know what happens in the end, like with Dobby and Sirius and Dumbledore. Yeah. Yeah, hurts your heart. However, I did forget how much of a douchebag Snape is. And when you, re after reading this, I was just like, there's this meme that, I'll put I'll put here for a couple seconds where it's just essentially of like he like try he was a bully full on bully to Neville he tried to like kill ne Neville's frog or something like that and yes we can love Alan Rickman Alan Rickman I he he's a genius for having made me even like be like oh it's Severus 
but in the books, totally messed up person. He just assumes that he has a right to be a dick because Lily didn't like him, even though he's in love with her just because she was friendly to him. But that's a discussion for another time. Um, but as I did with the first two, I wanted to show pictures that I really, really loved in it. And oh, I did like, I did notice that the illustrations in this were either, I think, more often or better, like, incorporated in this one than they were in Chamber of Secrets, which I will really love that they did that for a book that I already love. But I really, really enjoy this, like... Uh, this one here where they like get picked up by the night bus and then they're like all over the place the illustration jim k just did a beautiful job and like as i was reading this and i found out we're not getting the next illustrated edition until 2019 i was like oh oh it's worth it though look at the pretty pictures <laughs> i really love this one here of hermione casting um oh what's it called ridiculous in in um professor lupin's yeah, Professor Lupin's Defense Against the Dark Arts class. I love that, the bug art. I feel like the chapter beginnings were also, like, beautifully designed in this book, like, very notably. So something like this in the Quidditch game from Gryffindor versus Ravenclaw. I absolutely love that crest on there. And the last one is the herbology kind of lab thing. I absolutely love it. It's so freaking pretty in the paints and everything. <sighs> I'm so happy that the illustrations are, like, Slowly, slowly but surely and yes frustratingly but they're happening and they're doing being done very well and i found out though actually in 2018 they are releasing the paperback edition of the harry potter philosopher's stone illustrated so maybe i need to buy a 10th 11th how many copies do i have maybe i need to buy an 11th copy of harry potter and the philosopher's stone don't judge me. So those are all of the books that I read this week. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've read any of these and loved them or hate them. Also, what did you read this week? And I'm trying to think if my favorite was probably Harry Potter or Cinder. And they're both rereads, actually. So I ended up, like, not liking a lot of the new books that I read this week. But I knock books off my TBR. So Glass Half Full Perspective. And I think I'm at 61 books done on my Goodreads Challenge now. Which... I'm pretty, pretty happy with. Make sure to check the description box down below for links to all of these goods read, all of these books, Goodreads pages, as well as links to all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.